Vivek, yesterday they have done a deal regarding policy bazaar and how their stake would change over there. But over a period of time, at least in the last two, three years, there have been some significant stake monetizations that have happened which have propelled brokerages to increase their SOTP target price. Well, that's right. So when you analyze a company like InfoEdge, you know, the one thing that you have to look at is the, the kind of investments that they have. Remember, they run a whole host of businesses and, you know, it becomes very tough to actually uh, evaluate each or give a value to each business. So, you know, what most of the brokerages do is they run a, some of the parts valuation. So they look at uh, each company or each business that this particular, uh, you know, that the holding company actually uh, uh, keeps within itself and then they actually benchmark it against peers. So if you're looking at a name like uh, InfoEdge, you know, have a look at some of the unicorns that it has come up with. It has uh, Zomato, it has Canberra Digital, Applic Learning, ETHL Marketing, these are some of the names. So let's take the example of Credit Suisse and how you know they've actually gone ahead and evaluated InfoEdge. So they give the recruitment platform that is Nokri.com almost 730 rupees a share. That is the kind of target that they see only for the recruitment platform. For Zomato at this point of time they're only giving 200 but keep in mind you know there was a couple of news flows uh, that have actually come in the last week as well regarding certain uh, deals that may happen. In that case, they would be actually forced to revise their value upwards as far as Zomato is concerned in the SOTP. Uh, real estate is the other big player, almost 170 rupees is expected to be coming in from that particular name. Policy Bazaar at this point of time, again, they've given only 30, but post this deal and post how the business actually pans out, they'll again be revising it upwards is the kind of sense. So what they're saying is that InfoEdge, uh, if you do an SOTP valuation, could give you a target of almost 1350. And the kind of deals that the company has done in the last couple of months is actually keeping the market very happy which is why looking at the stock today up over six percent in the session okay Vivek uh, thanks for putting all of that in perspective it uh, sets the stage to actually get the top management of info edge now exclusively on ET now it's a uh, you know, a star performer in today's trading session. Let's bring up the intraday chart of InfoEdge and you can see how it's been rallying in trade and outperforming the markets from the word go. So let's welcome our guests, uh, Sanjeev Bikchandani, the founder and executive vice chairman at InfoEdge. And joining him is also Chintan Tucker, the whole time director and CFO at InfoEdge. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us here on ET Now. Uh, this is Nentara Rai. Let's get right down to business. Uh, uh, Mr. Bikchandani, I'll come to you first. Uh, congratulations. You're getting a thumbs up from the Lal Street as well. I want to not get so much into the specifics of the deals with you. I think we've read all of that uh, by now. What I want to understand from you is what appealed to you about Policy Bazaar, about uh, Pesa Bazaar. If I look at your previous investments, you have been hitting gold. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how you've been making these strategic investments. Well, uh, you know, to in Policy Bazaar, we went in in 2008, and 10 years later, we're still investing. Uh, the company has delivered and performed. I think full credit to the the management team and the and the founders and the entrepreneurs. Uh, and you know, the truth is, we do very little. It's uh, it's the entrepreneurs who and the founders and the management team there that does everything. We just uh, you know back them with money and help them now and then whenever they ask for help. Uh, so full credit to them rather than to us. Now, having said that, I think, uh, you know, we look for uh, very clear value propositions. We look for good founding teams and we look for some evidence of natural traction early on. So if I go back 10 years ago to a policy bazaar, I think we invested on a PowerPoint presentation and a prototype. Um, and essentially, uh, you know, Yashi Zaya, the, the CEO and founder, he came and he gave us a demonstration and he said, OK, what are you paying for your car insurance and which car do you have? Uh, and I told him, and um, he quit a quick demo, and he said, I'm willing to bet you're paying 60% more than you should be. Uh, you know, and he showed me six quotes uh, live from insurance companies, uh, which were much lower than what I was paying. And, you know, that demonstration convinced us that, look, there is something here, and maybe we should back it. Uh, and we put in 20 crores as a Series A investment uh, behind a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, likewise for Zomato, you know, there was clear evidence of utility, value proposition, good founders, and natural attraction. This is a website which both Hitesh and I were using ourselves, uh, and we never thought about investing until Hitesh mentioned one day and said, listen, why don't you look for investment? And that's when I made a cold call to the founder, Dipinder Goel, and he came over and we shook hands. Uh, you know. uh, but basically, that, that site of the interaction, it was finding, you know, people are finding it useful. I think uh, for good founders... Solving an unsolved problem, clear evidence of early natural attraction. I think uh, those are signs we look for when we invest. And then, of course, we work with the company and we keep backing it more and more as it goes along. 
um, and that's and it's it's it's, it's worked in uh, you know two three of our companies. Yes, that's how that's what has worked. Sanjeev, uh, you know, so I cannot believe that you actually invested based on a PowerPoint presentation. Obviously, it was a, a really good uh, a pitch that you saw from Policy Bazaar, which also convinced you that you were overpaying for insurance, etc. But if I look at this entire universe, a startup and early entrepreneurship universe for the last two weeks, it's been a good one. So after a very dry 2017, there have been two unicorns that have uh, been born, if I could say so, in a matter of a few days. You've had Swiggy a few days ago, and now you've got Policy Bazaar. The reason I'm asking you this, and I'm sure you've guessed it, is because of Zomato. Uh, you know, Swiggy is also a competitor of Zomato. So can you tell us what we can expect going forward? Uh, could Zomato be looking at fundraising? Is that entire food tech space, which had been criticized in 2017, uh, making a bounce back of sorts? Well, uh, you know, we can't make any forward-looking statements on Zomato uh, other than the saying that, look, it's doing really very well, it's growing very fast. I think the infusion from capital infusion and financial came just at the right time. And they're utilizing that, that money very, very well to grow the, the delivery business, while, of course, uh, the, the restaurant discovery business continues to grow. So I think Zomato has got, um, apart from a great uh, management team, has got, uh, you know, some, some natural advantages. It has got a very low cost of customer acquisition simply because it is the most popular discovery app, restaurant discovery app. And therefore, to convert its traffic to... Uh, to, to food ordering, um, you know, it doesn't cost that much money as compared to uh, any uh, any competitor, which does which is not uh, so popular for discovery. And that fundamental, I think, uh, structural advantage will hold Zomato in good stead going forward. And yes, you know, there is always uh, inbound investor interest in that company. Uh, but beyond that, I cannot say more about fundraising in Zomato right now. Right, uh, you know. Uh Sanjeev, you know, if you could just tell us that, you know, what is the environment you think for e-commerce funding right now? Uh, the sort of funding some of the companies are getting, uh, you know, with the big deal regarding uh, Flipkart and how it happens. Uh, you think that uh, money is coming back to e-commerce in India and this time in a bigger way? So I think what we are seeing right now is that uh, the winners have been picked and capital is coalescing around these winners. So capital for winners is abundant, uh, for others is scarce. Therefore, capital is both abundant and scarce at the same time. Uh, and, you know, each sort of funding uh, sort of cycle is different. So I think that earlier funding cycle where everybody got Series A and then, you know, had a challenge in Series B, I think that will not repeat itself. Everybody will not get Series A. Uh, I think um, but, 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 but capital will coalesce around uh, the winners that have been picked. So Flipkart was the winner that had been picked. It got acquired. I think policy was our Zomato. Uh, winners, uh, I think, uh, you know, some capital is co co coalescing around Swiggy as well because uh, people believe it's got a fighting chance. Uh, you know, and, and, and if, you, if you go sector after sector, you know, uh, uh, it, it, the winners have been picked and capital is coalescing around the winners. And also, so I would 90%, like... Uh, so 90% of the capital will go to fewer than 15 companies, actually. Right. Uh, Chintan, you know, uh, you've been also, you know, involved in this entire e-commerce funding space. Uh, do you agree with Sanjeev? Uh, you know, this round of funding would be different. Uh, it will be companies which are closer to profit or which has a size, only they will be able to get good funding at decent valuations? Absolutely. The internet businesses are all winner takes most, you know. That's why, you know, all the winners are kind of uh, concentrated on the on the guys who are showing true evidence of, of high growth, you know. Um, and profitability eventually would be there in some of the cases. And right now, I think it's still the phase of growth. So the capital is you know, actually a you know, fuel for growth. Uh, and most of the guys are uh, fund, taking funds you know, for, you know, fund to fund their growth. Mr. Bhiktandani, uh, you know, we are entering into an election year. The Modi Sarkar, one of the biggest planks it fought the election in 2014 was creation of jobs. You have access to fantastic data at InfoEdge. Uh, give us an idea from uh, your platform's perspective, how job creation is, uh, the kind of response that you're seeing on the portal in question. Uh, what is it that you're seeing on Nokri.com? Is there job creation? Are we doing better than what we were doing last year? And uh, how is the company doing? Well, you know, um, the last two years have been atypical, right, uh, for the economy. Uh, first, there was demonetization. Then there was GST and also RERA. The real estate sector, apart from being a big part of the economy, also has been historically a big employer, right? So there were these three discontinuous events, right? 
In addition, what we saw was that there was pressure on the IT sector, which accounts for a significant chunk of white-collar hiring in India in the last 10 years, and also a, a significant part of uh, Nokri business. Uh, that was under pressure from changing models, uh, from uh, the, 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 the rhetoric coming out of the U.S., the, 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 the constraints on the H-1B visas, uh, and so on. Uh, we now have got evidence, early evidence, that, look, uh, there may be a turnaround that's happening, uh, and... Uh, uh, you know, we may see a pickup uh, in the next couple of quarters, uh, but it's early yet, and we can't say for sure, but it looks like there is early evidence. Chintan, you want to add something? No, it's fine. It, we... Chintan, go ahead. You wanted to say something about this? Uh, I just I agree with you know, what Sanju said, and, you know, uh, we are hoping that, you know, IT businesses also kind of have, you know, bottomed out, and we, you know, uh, hope that it picks up again. But even within IT, actually, if you look at it, you know, even last year, the captive businesses have been doing well. The BPOs have been kind of doing reasonably well. So it's more segment to segment, you know, right? You know, manufacturing in general may have little weakness, but some part of manufacturing has been doing well. For example, auto seems to be doing well. Auto ancillaries are doing well. Um, banking and you know, financial services, insurance, they all seem to be growing well, very well. Before I let you go, since we have you on the channel uh, on a day which is a milestone for the startup universe at large with Policy Bazaar becoming a unicorn, you've given us a little indication of what it is that you look into investments, but give us an idea of uh, what are the sectors that are exciting you at the moment. Uh, for instance, you know, we in, uh, as journalists hear a lot about, for example, telemedicine, healthcare related, uh, with Modi Care also being announced, those being the buzzing sectors. And is that what InfoEdge is also looking at? Are you looking at making uh, more investments in these uh, sunrise sectors, if I may call it that? So, I see, you know, we don't look at um, sectors. What we look at is individual companies and founders and figure out what's bubbling through. So we don't move with a preconceived notice and a notion that, hey, we must do an automobile site uh, and then go and look for one. So, you know, if you look at Policy Bazaar or you look at Zamato, you know, we, if we had gone top down, we would it would never have occurred to us to look at these companies because we some, some of the things we invest in, we could not have even imagined them ourselves, right? Uh, and uh, so, 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 you know, so we look at what's bubbling up rather than, uh, hey, where should we invest, right? And we, we even, and we believe that's the best way to do it, that invest behind individual companies and founders that will do well um, and, and don't invest in sectors. Um, so, yes, I mean, uh, telemedicine is, a, uh, is, is emerging. And if we find a good team and with a good value proposition, which is unique, distinctive and possibly scalable, uh, we could look at it. Uh, you know, uh, so, we, you know, ag agri-tech is another sector which, we, you know, which, which, which we've already invested in. Uh, you know, with a couple of gramophone. Now, it's early days yet in agri-tech and, you know, but, you know, when we did Nokia, it was early days for the internet and when we did policy, but early days for insurance. So, you know, you, uh, we believe in going in early. Um, and yes, we'll make some mistakes and some will not work. So you're looking at agri-tech to expand in? So we've done one in agri-tech. We've done one in agri-tech uh, called gramophone. Uh, and that's a, that's, a, that's a it's early it's very small but we think it's a very very good team and they're doing a good job and they seem to be you know all right um, and so you know typically we don't invest in competing place and therefore we are unlikely to do a second company which will compete with that uh, and we've never actually done, done, done competitive companies uh, we, we we keep looking at other you know sector, we keep looking at companies that come to us we go out and find companies but we don't pre-identify sectors to look at. Right, uh, Sanjeev and uh, Hitesh, thank you so much for taking out uh, time. Sanjeev and Chintan, sorry. Uh, thank you so much for taking out time for us. Always good uh, to get perspective. And congratulations on identifying Policy Bazaar much earlier, which now, of course, uh, is coming into limelight for various big funding.